And now we've been talking a lot about those very consequential French elections, but there is another democratic exercise hurtling towards us with potentially more serious global ramifications. And it is, of course, that rematch between Joe Biden and Donald Trump for the US presidency. As you may know, President Biden has been trying to revive his beleaguered re-election effort as members of his own party debate the future of his candidacy. Amid the uncertainty, Mr. Biden appeared at two campaign events in Pennsylvania on Sunday. That is a key swing state. And he's written a letter to Democrats in Congress saying he is firmly committed to beating Donald Trump, despite what he described as speculation in the press. He called on Democrats to unite around his re-election bid. It's the American president's latest attempt to quieten critical voices after his lackluster debate performance. But those efforts have not stopped the president's fellow Democrats from weighing the risks of keeping him as their candidate. The vice president, Kamala Harris, has been named by some as a potential replacement. We'll have more on that story in a moment, but uh, residents of Gaza City, in Gaza, of course, say they've experienced some of the most intense shelling and airstrikes since the start of the Israeli offensive. Columns of tanks were reported to be moving in from several directions. The Israeli army said it launched this new operation following what it said was intelligence of Hamas and Islamic Jihad infrastructure and militants in the area. Soon after the army issued an evacuation order, hundreds of Palestinian families were seen fleeing westwards in response. Well, from on both those stories, I'm joined now on the line from Tel Aviv by Arise Special Correspondent Carl Bostick. Uh, good to see you, Carl. So let's start with uh, the U.S. Uh, Joe Biden calls uh, for him to step down, getting louder by the day. What's your assessment of where things are at the moment? Charles, good evening. Well, this is a really crucial week, uh, maybe the most crucial week uh, in uh, President Biden's uh, presidency, because uh, those calls that you mentioned for him to withdraw uh, are really, in many ways, hard to overcome. Uh, you mentioned the fact that he appeared at two live events uh, over the weekend, and he issued a letter saying he's firmly committed. Uh, he issued, he threw down a challenge uh, earlier today, Charles, uh, when he called into a very popular morning uh, talk show, saying that if anyone is saying that I should withdraw, meaning any of the Democratic uh, leaders uh, you know, of, 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 of the country are saying he should withdraw, then they should challenge me uh, for the nomination and challenge me at the convention in Chicago, which is uh, August 19th. So he's throwing down that dare charge. But to put things into perspective, uh, David Axelrod, he was uh, the campaign strategist for Barack Obama's uh, campaign, uh, where he won uh, uh, election twice, uh, serving two terms as president in the U.S., Barack Obama. Basically, Axelrod is saying that... Um, Joe Biden is out of touch. He's saying that he's not really uh, understanding how deeply concerned Americans are about his ability, not only to uh, run for office, but to win the campaign or to even serve out another four-year term. He puts things in further perspective, Charles. He says four years ago this time, uh, Joe Biden was 10 points ahead of Donald Trump in the polls, 10 points ahead. Now he's six points behind. Uh, also a crucial week, Charles, is because uh, you've got Democratic <coughs> leaders and congressmen coming back from the 4th of July recess. This is their first day back. So we expect to see a lot of conversations going on in private and perhaps even in public. Uh, you also have a NATO summit coming to Washington for the first time in 25 years. That starts on Tuesday. If anything, it's almost a disruption from what's going on nationally in the U.S., but Joe Biden will be the host leader for that NATO summit. And on Thursday, Charles, uh, there will be a, a news conference, a one-on-one -on -one news conference with, with Joe Biden uh, and uh, the U.S. press. Uh, he has had the fewest press conferences as a president in decades. It'll be the first one since November 22. A lot of the critics are saying that he must give more unscripted moments, meaning appearing in public, less reliance on teleprompters, uh, showing that he's, you know, mentally fit, that he has a stamina to go through all of this. Those unscripted moments, like at the, at the church uh, 
uh, in Philadelphia <clears throat> that you mentioned. Uh, however, he's doubling down. He's saying, I'm not going to listen to these rich liberal elites. He's referring to the media. He's referring to rich donors. And what we see right now, Charles, it is really so nuanced as this. There's a race class divide now uh, brewing in the Democratic Party. Joe Biden's base are the black voters and the blue collar middle class uh, union workers. And those are the ones you're saying that are his base and that will save him, that will rescue him. Uh, however, again, keep in mind, Charles, one final detail is that you know, when, when the Joe Biden campaign you know, wants to basically make the campaign and the narrative about Donald Trump's uh, shortcomings and the threat he poses to democracy. No one's talking about that at all, Charles. If anything, everyone's talking about uh, Joe Biden's uh, age, 74%, and posed nationally feel he's too old to serve as president. And really more worryingly, Charles, if he can even, besides going through a campaign, would even serve out four years. And finally, one more important point to make is this. We're talking about people being concerned because if Joe Biden loses, Charles, there's a real, real big chance that both uh, the Senate would flip the Republicans, the House would would uh, remain Republican with a heavy majority, and you would have an historic Congress under the control of a possible De Donald Trump, which would be one of the greatest concerns that Americans are, are dealing with right now. Right. And um, I guess the bottom line is that many, many Americans, and you are an American, of course, yourself, would presumably want a president who would be able to get through a debate with his opponent without losing his train of thought in, in mid-sentence and forgetting things. But, but also the, the other question is how much that negates three and a half years of a president who's been able to bring successes to the American people. From your knowledge, Carl, of contemporary American politics, do you think Joe Biden is best placed to beat Donald Trump, or would Vice President Kamala Harris perhaps be a better candidate? One of two things to keep in mind, Charles, uh, is this. Right now, because uh, uh, the Democrats really love their president, they want to give Joe Biden time and space so that he really looks at just the daunting odds about how really the majority of Americans think he's too old to run and he won't last for four years. They want to give him the time and space to consider that. Uh, that time and space is really maybe this week, Charles, uh, and then next week where a lot of live events are scheduled. Uh, the Democratic Convention is August 19th. That's a very, very short window, Charles, for anything to turn around uh, in that period. Uh, what could happen now, Charles, is this, and you're talking about history and my personal knowledge. I remember being in school back in 1974. I was too young to understand uh, the impact of Watergate and Richard Nixon when he was forced to resign from office. But that was preceded by uh, a visit to the White House to the most senior members uh, of Congress who were Republicans. Um, I, senior, I meaning the leaders of the House, the leaders of uh, the Senate, and they went one August afternoon to visit the White House, basically saying that he had lost the confidence of the senior members uh, of his party in Congress. He had lost the confidence of the American public that he would not only lose the election, he would also um, uh, impact the, the, his own party's chances. And because of that fateful meeting, Charles, that's why Richard Nixon resigned. What I'm saying is, saying is this, we are still a little bit ways away from the fact of possibly senior Democratic members of the Senate and uh, the House taking that long walk to the White House to say time is up. And regarding Kamala Harris, very simply, for all the you know doubtful polling she's gotten as being less popular than uh, Joe Biden, right now there's a real research. They, they point to her youth. She's 59 years old. Uh, she'll turn 60 weeks before the election. Uh, they admire her prosecutorial style because she's a former prosecutor. And she would really, really upend the Trump campaign because they could no longer make uh, Trump's, uh, Biden's age an issue. And she would re-energize uh, black voters, women voters, young voters. Uh, so that's why, and people are saying that, look, at, she was chosen to be vice president because Part of her job description is to be ready to step in as president if for any reason the president cannot continue his duties. So that's why there'd be a real groundswell of support for Kamala Harris uh, to step in and be the Democratic nominee. And that's why actually also the Republicans would actually be very, very worried 
if that was Donald Trump's opponent. Okay, well, just, um, I mean, it's going to be a fascinating few weeks and months ahead, uh, watching every sentence that Joe Biden utters, probably, to work out whether people believe that he's capable of continuing with his candidacy. But we've got about a minute or so, Carl, so as briefly as you can, just give us the latest that's uh, coming out of um, Israel and Gaza, where you are. Well, very simply, Charles, we're now nine months into a war, uh, yet another ceasefire deal has been uh, offered. What's new is this. For the first time, Hamas has dropped a key demand. They were demanding that uh, you know, before they began a ceasefire deal to release hostages, Israel had to promise and pledge not to restart the war. They have dropped that demand. They are saying that they would not only release hostages, and basically the elderly, uh, the, the ill, and the woman, but now also including female soldiers. That's also a first chance. And in that period, after six weeks, then negotiate for a full end to the war and release the remaining male soldiers. So that's new. However, Benjamin Netanyahu on Sunday said that uh, he will not commit to promising uh, to stop uh, you know, fighting the war no matter what. So that's kind of thrown a, a monkey wrench into things because right now, Charles, finally, about 68% of Israelis say that the priority should be the hostages home. Only 28% saying continue the war. And then if a poll is held on who Israel's leader should be, Benjamin Netanyahu now, Charles, would come in third. Very interesting talking with you, Carl. Thank you ever so much. Carl Bostick is a Rise Special Correspondent. He was talking to me on the line there from Tel Aviv.